Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to be starting uh, a new season. Uh, we're finally in game week. Talked to the guys on Saturday. We had practice Saturday morning uh, and then gave them Sunday off uh, and get back into our, our routine today. Um, I know it's a change this year. We're doing this on Monday uh, rather than Tuesday. Um, and uh, it, it helps us for sure as coaches doing it this way. I don't know if it affects you guys a whole lot, but uh, it does help us. Um, so we'll have a normal Monday practice and, and have a normal week. Uh, we've got some guys banged up a, a little bit that um, nobody's been actually ruled out, but we have a couple of guys that uh, um, we'll have to watch throughout the week and see if they progress well enough to play, uh, which we hope that they do. Uh, we're excited about the opportunity, uh, getting a really good UT Martin team in here. Uh, Coach Simpson's done a great job. He's been there a long time, and, and they have a great system, and, and he does a really good job of getting those guys to um, play within their schemes offensively and defensively. Uh, they've won their league three straight years. Um, as you guys know, that's my background, and I know how good the football is, and, and our guys are going to know how good the football is as well. So we'll finish uh, our continued prep work uh, the next few days and then be ready to roll on Saturday. Chris, starting game one at quarterback is a little bit different than what Avery experienced last season. What advice do you have for him as he's uh, taking on some challenges? Yeah, just be him, be himself. Uh, we have uh, a lot of guys around him that can make plays uh, at all those different skill positions. Uh, and I, I don't think he's going to be nervous. That's just not his nature. I think he's going to be very uh, confident. But we just want him to play within himself and uh, make the plays that uh, he's capable of making. And we know he's going to make a few that uh, uh, are going to be kind of off script because that's what uh, he's he excels at. But uh, I I'm excited to see him you know, run the show. How they look in practice? Have they been good breakers? Yeah, um, we're going to kind of see how it goes uh, with practice this week, but we feel comfortable really with Dylan or Sterling back there on punts. Um, probably see both of them back there at some point. Uh, We've kind of pushed the envelope with Dylan and with Jace and with Keegan on kick returns. I'm not sure which way it'll go uh, on Saturday, um, but maybe everybody would get a shot back there. We do like the ability. We've got a number of skilled guys that we need to get the ball in their hands, and that's an opportunity for them to do that. So um, it, we'll just see how it plays out this week. Exiting the preseason practices, what did you feel like was the strength for you guys on each side of the ball? Um, what I thought going in uh, on defense, which is a veteran group, a lot of guys on both sides of the ball or uh, on all three levels of that defense that have played an awful lot of football uh, and us continuing to try to provide depth in those three uh, positions of D-line, linebacker, and secondary. So I think the strength on defense is just the veteran people we have there. Um, offensively, skill. You know, we've, we've got running backs, we've got receivers that uh, can make big time plays. Um, and uh, we've got to find ways to get guys touches. Uh, but I've been pleased each day that there's been somebody else in the wide receiver crew that has stepped up. There's been uh, a bunch of running backs that have made plays and, and tight ends as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to run into some problems too. We're going to have some adversity on Saturday, and we've got to be able to withstand it and be able to grow from it. Uh, probably an entire body of work, and I think he's one of our top leaders. He wasn't elected captain, but he received a bunch of votes like a lot of other guys did. We had a lot of guys get votes, but he's just been a really good leader on that side of the ball, and he's been a consistent, consistent player at the nose position, and both he and Uso are going to play a lot of football for us. Coach, uh, UT Martin has won, I think, three straight mm -hmm. This year in particular, uh, return a few guys on offense that helped them last year. What stands out about that offense, and 
what challenges do they um, well, Dent's a really good quarterback that uh, played a lot of football for him. When you have a returning quarterback, uh, it's always a, a bright thing. And then uh, they've got a number of interior offensive linemen that have played a lot of football. They've got so many older guys, juniors and seniors, that have played a lot of football on the offensive side. They've got a bunch of wide receivers that can make plays. Um, got a kick returner that's an exceptionally talented guy that's a wide receiver for them. So I think the fact that they aren't just – uh, boy, you got to stop the run, or you got to stop the RPO or pass game. They, they do both equally well, and they're really balanced. So for us defensively, it's going to be a big challenge. They're a really good offense. Coach, uh, how hard is it to manage one of these games? I mean, obviously, you, you need to win, but mm-hmm. you want to see a lot of players. And is it kind of hard to balance that out? He, well, it's always tough to balance the first game because you you just sometimes you don't know because you haven't had as many live situations, whether it's uh, tackling or, or different things that uh, live special teams that you don't do a lot of. We, we go really hard, but we don't always go to the ground. Um, so yeah, it is a balancing act. Obviously, we, we've got to put our best foot forward to have an opportunity to win the football game uh, and, and play the guys that have given them given ourselves the best chance to be successful. And and there's we don't talk much about well, what if if we yeah just I've been there. I've been on the other side of this thing when I know that's been talked about, and then you, then you end up getting beat. Um, uh, by the FCS uh, program, and this is a really good football team that uh, um, we've got to play really well on both sides of the ball with some inexperienced guys getting their first snaps. And then, like we've talked all all fall camp and, and really all summer, our stars got to be stars. You know, if you guy that's played two or three years of football, step up and show people you've played two or three years of football and, and, and be the dude, be the guy. Every team's different. You know, locker room's different, talent. What does this team do? Maybe you think can do better than last. Um, hopefully, we can be more explosive on offense. That would be uh, one thing that uh, we, we talk about and, and you know, kind of tease the offensive staff of you got to call another couple plays because we got pushed out at the five, or we got tackled from behind at the six, or didn't get it in. We've we've had the ability with a number of skilled kids to hit some home runs. And um, now we can't just take home run shots. We, we've got to be able to get the ball, ball in space to some of these guys quickly and let them make some plays and maybe try to hit a home run. Um, so I think we can be more explosive. Um, and then on defense, I hope we can el- eliminate some of the explosive plays. And, and uh, that's the thing that probably makes me most, most concerned is um, you can do everything you want, but if you cannot stop at the explosive play, um, people are going to you know, get quick scores and, and stay with great momentum. And that's something that uh, um, we've made a, a point about because of our offense having such explosive players. We go good on good an awful lot, and if they're getting explosive plays on our, our first team defense, uh, that's concerning. So we've got to be able to get more explosive plays and eliminate them. Eliminate them. You talk about being a veteran team. Uh, I see you have several redshirt freshmen on your uh, two deep, but uh, do you anticipate any true freshmen? This year yeah, um, yeah, we probably do. Probably not ready to to talk about those guys yet um, because I don't know who will. But uh, I think you hit it on the head, Arnie. We've got the redshirt freshman class or true sophomore class. When you look at you know Jace and and Avery and um, Asa, some of the guys that that played some for us, Austin Romaine. I mean, that was a really good class, and you're going to see a lot of guys that were redshirted last year that you probably didn't see very much other than a, a game or two um, be real factors this year. You know, whether it's Wesley Fair, Jack Fabris, Mikey Bergeron as examples on um, on defense and, and uh, uh, a number of guys on offense that uh, we were really impressed with this class that we were able to redshirt a bunch of those guys, but they're going to have to be a factor for us this year for us to be successful. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we, we've, we have some experience there with Carver and Hadley and TP playing a lot of football for us. Um, Easton Kilt, he's played a lot of football, not for us, but he's played a lot of football. Andrew Leingang's been here a long time and done some really good things. And I'm excited because Liney's stepped up in, in a big role. Um, Sam Hecht, 
um, you know, he's filling some big shoes with what we lost at center over the last couple centers we've had in in uh, Gilly and Noah. But he's doing a really good job. It's the next group. It's Pastore. It's Capria. Um, it's Alex Key. It's Beckwith. Those are the guys that uh, we're continuing to push because we're going to need those guys. And um, I, I, we're probably in the seven or eight. Need to push that closer to nine. Um, and I don't know if Coach Riley's ready to get all the way to nine deep, but we're we feel like we're going to be able to play seven or eight guys, and, and that's something that I'm excited about with Drew Little being on the sideline to help us rotate some guys. And then I know we talked about a bunch of the defensive ends throughout yeah. fall camp, but one guy that I felt didn't get talked about too much was Travis Bates. Yeah. What's impressed you with the Work ethic and just, uh, you know, blue-collar kid that uh, goes to battle every day. He's going to play a lot for us. You know, he's battling with stuff, and, and we need to keep stuff uh, healthy for the, the long haul. So Travis is going to play some plays there. You're going to see a lot of defensive linemen play. And um, I, I'm excited because we've always had good depth there. Um, and this year at the defensive end spot, we have great depth there. And we, we wouldn't miss a beat by – playing six or seven guys there. Maybe some have a different skill set than others. Uh, but uh, I like what we have there, and we've got to find ways to get multiple of those guys on the field, and, and we're working on that with different packages right now. Coach, you, uh, I think at the beginning of fall camp, mentioned the quarterback or cornerback four battle and where that sort of stood mm -hmm. at that point. Where does that stand now? How comfortable are you with those guys? Well, yeah, at corner, you know, Jacob Harris and, and Keenan Garber, you feel really comfortable. They've played a lot of football, then, and, and we've talked about those guys a lot. They're they're all conference players. Um, Justice James has really had a good fall camp. Um, Jordan Dunbar, a transfer, has started to emerge as as a guy that we think we can count on um, on defense as well as uh, special teams. Donovan McIntosh is a guy that's. Um, made a lot of plays uh, as as another corner, so we've got a number of guys there. A lot of them may be special teams guys uh, and give a blow to Keenan and, and Jacob, but uh, um, we're continuing to, to do a good job of developing depth there. In, in terms of Avery Johnson, uh, you know, this is his first start. At mm -hmm. How do you sort of manage those beginning reps for him to sort of make sure that he's as comfortable as he can? Yeah, yeah. He, he, if you know Avery, I'm not worried about how I manage things. Cut the kid loose, let him go play. The kid's really good. And so I'm not managing anything. I'm going to encourage him, tell him I love him, tell him how much I believe in him, and go play. Go do what you do. You've been waiting for this opportunity, and uh, um, he'll make plays within himself. But, man, I'm, I'm as excited as you guys are. Yeah, he was an early enrollee, so we saw a, a lot of things out of him in spring ball. It was just trying to simplify some of the things game plan wise. Um, so because he's got unbelievable speed and ability to be elusive, and he's gotten so much stronger, he's gotten better at running routes. Um, he and Avery have a really good chemistry. Uh, they throw the ball around a lot to each other. Um, he's a guy that. We, we missed him this last spring. He was out with an injury um, and uh, probably started more full go in, in July. And you, you've seen him get stronger and more confident. He's had a really good fall camp. And, and he's a guy that we're talking about of one of those explosive guys that could be a home run guy. And um, so I'm excited because Jace is, Jace is playing really well and playing really fast. Uh, I think he feels healthy. And I'm excited to see what he's going to show everybody. Well, um, they missed a lot of time in the spring, so that that, that takes sets you back a little bit. It just you, you need to be around each other, throwing the ball all the time, and and now we've been able to get back into that in fall camp. And um, you know those guys have have kind of been in sync ever since they've been here. They live together and they um, do a lot of things together, and they know they know each other's traits. And so um, he's continued to grow and get better. Experience. He's played. Um, he was learning our our offense, and and he's made some really good strides from obviously practice one to where we're at now. 
And uh, I, I like the fact that he's continued to grow and get better. And, and he knew when he came in here, like, and we, we need you to perform. We need you to, to elevate Avery. We need you to elevate Knuth. We need you to do those things. Um, and we knew it wasn't going to be something overnight because – our offense is probably a little bit more complex uh, from what he's done. I don't know that, but I can just tell because of all the, the terminology we have. And um, the last few weeks, he's he's played really well. Uh, on the same respect, I think Jacob Canoose played really well. We we know who our our first one is in, in Avery, and we're still battling for that second spot right now. We've put both of them with the ones at different times to give Avery a rest and, and to push those guys with the starting offense, and they've both excelled. And then we've split the reps with the twos, and it's a conversation that Coach Wells and I'll have at the end of the week uh, of which guy will go in, but they're both playing really well right now. Yeah, I think he learned from from the best in the last few years uh, of Biebs and KT, and I thought those two and Gilly, those guys were phenomenal leaders. And he learned from those guys, and they pass it on that, hey, you've, you've got to be a guy. He and Carver and TP have really stepped up. They're the ones that have the most experience, but they've really stepped up in their leadership role. Um, you know, Hadley was voted a captain by his peers, so um, he's got to have a big voice. And, and sometimes, and, and I'll have a captain's meeting later on, but that voice isn't when things are going well. That voice is, is when you're having adversity. And uh, they chose you to, to be one of those guys that they, they look to when we have adversity. And so, um, but uh, Hadley is one of my favorite kids. He loves playing this game of football. He is appreciative of everything that he's been able to do at Kansas State and what Kansas State has done for him. Uh, and so, you just can't do anything but love Hadley. That kid is a is a kid that loves ball. I was going to ask you about an offensive line or two. I kind of feel like Kilty sometimes gets how consistent has he been learning what he's doing and fitting in? Yeah, uh, really consistent. Um, we were fortunate to get him here in the spring so he could learn what we were doing. And there's some differences, and a lot of it is terminology. Um, but what's helped Easton Kilty is going against – you know, Big 12 caliber players every snap of practice. I mean, there's not a drop off from from our first one to our sixth one as far as the ability to pass rush. And you know, Mott's a little bit more moxie than some of the guys because Mott's played a ton of football. But man, you get you know um, Jordan Allen off the edge, and you get Toby off the edge, and you get Ryan Davis coming at you. I mean, we've we've really tested uh, Easton with all these defensive ends that can make plays, and and he's gotten better because of it. And he doesn't say a whole lot, um, uh, but I think he's going to be a real stable force for us at tackle and play a lot for us. We saw what Garrett Oakley could be at least in yeah. small doses last year, but better towards the end. After him, how are you feeling about the Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Wyatt. The guy that has jumped at us this year uh, is Braden Lofton. Um, he's made play after play, um, and not only in the pass game, but in the run game. He's really done a nice job of getting that extra weight, that extra strength, so he can be a point of attack guy. Um, but he's made just a ton of plays in the pass game, and he's got the chemistry with all those quarterbacks, knows how to get open, knows how to find those seams, hasn't played much for us. And so he, he, there's a guy, that one of those we were talking about, that we're counting on that hasn't played very much but has shown us great things. Um, uh, Swanee's been consistent as he always is, and uh, Will, Will's going to play a bunch of football for us and knows our offense better than any of the tight ends do. Um, but uh, Braden's the one that has really stepped up. Sometimes we've held Oak back a little bit to make sure he stays healthy. Um, and, and really, Braden's the one that's been a beneficiary of it. Coach, uh, coming off Aces injury last year, how ready is he to back up Dad? Yeah, he's, um, he's ready. Uh, he really took care of his body uh, and got his knee back. Um, and we noticed that quickly in fall camp when we didn't know how much he'd be limited. And, and uh, um, with his hard work with the training staff, they cut him loose and allowed him to, to go play. Uh, and he's been really good. We've, Like I said, we moved him from Will Backer to Sam Backer. Um, we think that maybe is a little bit more natural position, although he could play Will if we asked him to. Um, we've pressed him more on special teams right now. 
because of uh, his ability to run, get off blocks, and um, he's he's mature beyond his years. Um, he's going to play a ton of football for us, and uh, uh, we're excited about him because he's another one of that group in that freshman redshirt freshman class that uh, uh, is really talented. So two weeks ago, the defensive players came in here and they bragged about how many turnovers they were forcing. So over the last couple of weeks, has it been that kind of story, or is the offense doing a good job of taking care of the football? How, how good of a battle? Yeah, it's it's been good. We've kind of switched a little bit. We still do good on good, but we're we're putting in some scout work now a little bit and, and doing more situations. Um, I think it's been great for both sides. I think there's some times where um, they've gotten behind the DBs, which has been good for, for us to see offensively that we can run by some fast guys. Um, I don't think we've had the, as many turnovers as as they'd gotten that week of, of whatever fall practice or fall fall camp that was when they were getting them in bunches, which is awesome to see. And you know, the, the key to success is pretty simple is turnover margin, can't give it away, and you got to be able to take it from them, and then explosive plays. you got to be able to prevent them, and you got to be able to get them. If you can win those two um, categories, you have a really good chance to be successful. Uh, this is your, uh, going to be your sixth year at K-State. Um, Hard to believe. Yeah. Uh, are, are you just still as excited for the season to start, you know, ready to get going and playing, or is it kind of a, a, a routine that you have? It's, it's um. It gets quicker and quicker, and it comes faster and faster. Uh, and we all like fall camp because it's football, 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 and that's awesome. And then all of a sudden you get to when school starts, and then um, you kind of get a lull. And last week was a little bit of a lull. We had some good practices. We had some practices, practices that I thought were just okay. Um, and then today we better be amped up a little bit because it is it is game week and the guys know it and they had a workout with true this morning and true said um, they came in and got their work done and and, and yeah I, i'm i'm excited uh, i always am this time of year when it's time to go play games um, you, you're busier uh, obviously with different responsibilities that you didn't have during fall camp and now all of a sudden i've been in more meetings today probably than than i care to be in um, but it's it's that time of year, and we're excited to get going. Anything else? Uh, did you watch the Ireland game? I wa we had practice, so I was able to watch the fourth quarter, um, and um, I thought I thought it looked. I was trying to figure out everything, not necessarily the game. I was trying to find the surroundings and the stands and and the sidelines and uh, the field and all that stuff. It looks spectacular. Um, that's why we sent these two guys over here. They can give me the the, the lowdown, um, and I'll ask those guys later on. But uh, um, yeah, and I don't know how many times they ever talked about. Next year's Kansas State, Iowa State. I saw something uh, maybe in in one of the corners of the end zone of next year, uh, K State, Iowa State. But uh, uh, no, it uh, we watched a little bit of it. Yeah, great game. Yeah, last one, D Scott. Sixth season, you just kind of jogging out of that tunnel for this first game of the season. What's going to be going through your mind? Hmm. Um. One, how are my kids doing at K-Dub? Because they play at night, too. So that's the first thing, uh, is how's he's doing. Um, but then just, I take it all in. And I probably do a better job of that now than I did in year one, where I didn't know what was happening. But I take it all in, um, whether it's, uh, I've got so much respect, and a lot of people know this for Dr. Trace. I've got so much respect for uh, what he does with with the pride, and and I love our band. I love hearing it uh, as they're as they're coming in the student section because um, they'll be you know rolling in in full force an hour before kickoff. Those things I, I never take for granted, and I always take in. I take them in better now than I did when I first got here. Um, but just the pageantry of college football, and, and like to tell our new kids, hey, we're going to pull up in buses about 100 yards from the front of the stadium, and you're going to get to see what college football is all about. And they're like, what? You know, and some of the older guys are like, it's one of the coolest traditions that we started a few years ago um, with the walk where we get out of those buses and, and the fans are there, young kids, families, the band. It's awesome. And that's, that's what college football is about. That's what excites me to your question. That's what I get excited about um, is the pageantry of what college football is. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, sir. Have a good week.